There was a time not so long ago when if you wanted a bucky that did hard work and doubled as everyday transport, your choices were limited to two options, a Hilux or a bunch of other things that didn't quite measure up. Over the last 18 months or so, the Hilux has been feeling the heat from the likes of the new Ford Ranger and these two, Volkswagen's Amarok and the brand new Mazda BT50. And these two are the contenders in our Bucky battle. It's not a straight comparison because they have quite different spec, but the BT50 is the newest on the block and the Amarok features a new motor. However, they both have some way to go before coming close to toppling the hallowed Hilux from its perch. The Amarok is currently selling around 10% more units than the BT50, but even if you combine these two's latest monthly sales figures and then triple that figure, you still wouldn't quite match the sales that the Hilux is racking up. So we're setting out to answer the question, which of these brand new buckies is the best? It looks like the BT50 has followed Porsche's design philosophy. When the German manufacturer decided they wanted a big SUV, they grafted all the elements from their small sports cars onto their big Cayenne. And the results were horrendous. Mazda have tried the same thing, and the results aren't much better. It is quite possibly the most girly looking Bucky out there, thanks to its maker's insistence of sculpting in all the features of its road cars onto this not insignificant slab of metal, and they just don't seem to fit very well from a proportions point of view. Mazda will tell you that the BT50 looks like nothing else in its class, and that's a good thing because if it did, we'd have more than one horrible looking Bucky on our roads. I don't know, for me, Buckies need to have more attitude than style. They need to look tough and a little angry. Something like this. The Amarok has been out for a while now, but it's still a fresh looking design. It's angular and muscular, and Volkswagen haven't tried to force on a generic family face. For me, it's not just the better looking Bucky out of the two contenders, it's the best looking Bucky on the market. And that means the Amarok wins hands down in the looks contest. Despite them being more sophisticated than ever, Bucky still have a job to do, and that job is carry stuff. The Mazda wins back some ground by beating the Amarok for load carrying ability. The VW can carry just over 950 kilograms, with the Mazda being able to handle just over 1200 kilograms. Carrying a load is one thing, carrying a driver in good comfort is another. The Amarok may have the whole solid thing going on the outside, but in here, it's all fairly standard VW. In fact, there's nothing besides a very chunky gear shift to suggest that this is a car that was built for physical labor. Still, there's good space, there's decent comfort, and there are even some nice extras. Standard in our test car, you get electric windows and mirrors, climate control, and cruise control, and there are a few more things that you can add from the options list. The upside to this very VW interior is that it's all very ergonomic, all the materials are high quality, and the interactions feel solid. There may be those who bemoan the fact that Bucky's are becoming a bit soft on the inside, and that this kind of cabin isn't going to do well when faced with the torment that an everyday working Bucky goes through. Me? I say rubbish. There are plenty of folk for whom a Bucky is their daily transport. Why shouldn't they have a little pleasure while they work? There's not a lot wrong with the Amarok's interior setup, but it loses out to the Mazda. Just like the Amarok, the BT50 is filled with good materials and a solid build, but it's got a lot more toys. This top of the range SLE has got everything the VW has, but it's also got a multifunction steering wheel with voice command and Bluetooth and a USB interface. The BT50 is one of the new generation of buckies that does its best to balance real utility with proper road car comfort. This interior is more sedan-like than anything else, much like the bucky it's closely related to, the Ford Ranger. One of the major differences between the two contenders is that the Mazda is a proper 4x4 with a low range setting, whereas the VW is just a 4x2. Both have a lockable rear diff and the kind of clearances you'd expect from cars in their class, but the Mazda will be the more capable double cab when the going gets tough. So then, how do they stack up in the power stakes?
In the white corner, the four-cylinder German contender with 132 kilowatts and 400 newton meters of bi-turbo diesel power. And in the sort of brownish greyish corner with 147 kilowatts and 450 newton meters, the 3.2 litre five cylinder Japanese contender. The figures do give the impression that the drive in these two may be quite different, but it doesn't quite work out the way you'd imagine. It might have the bigger engine and more power and an interior setup that makes it more refined, but there's nothing subtle about the drive in this BT50. The ride setup is hard, the automatic gearbox can be harsh. It might be state of the art, but it definitely feels more old school. It still manages to be fairly easy to use on an everyday basis with good steering and a helpful kit like park distance control, but on the move, it turns out the BT50 is the less enjoyable drive. It is the more expensive of the two on test here, but that money goes into keeping you preoccupied with nice toys and a 4x4 system that realistically you probably won't call on that often. The Amarok, quite simply, is just more fun. It may have lower performance figures, but the bi-turbo setup means that the power is delivered with more urgency, and it's easier to access when you need it. The ride setup is more forgiving. In fact, the only downside, really, is that the clutch takes a bit of getting used to. The Amarok is a little more tricky to operate in tight spaces because there's no park distance control, although that is an optional extra. Pricing for this Amarok double cab by TDI 4x2 Highline is 375,000 Rand. The Mazda, with its extra interior features and 4x4 drivetrain, is 462,000 Rand. And that means, quite simply, that you could add every single extra on the Amarok spec list and still drive away paying less than you would for the Mazda, albeit in a two-wheel drive rather than a four-wheel drive. The BT50 might be the more stylish choice. It might have more interior creature comforts and its automatic gearbox may mean it's easier to live with on an everyday basis, but there's no doubt what the Amarok lacks in comparative sophistication, it makes up for with a drive that is a lot more fun. The BT50 might be the more luxurious choice, but the Amarok is my choice. The Amarok's power upgrade adds welcome muscle with loads of torque to match. The six-speed manual works a treat too and performance is certainly sporty. This is still one of the more handsome double cabs on the market and it's enjoyable to drive, but a heavy clutch requires some careful footwork.
the Mazda's beefy 3.2-litre turbo diesel engine is a class act, allowing all the urge and shove one could wish for. The auto box makes driving on and off-road convenient too. High spec levels and a spacious interior make for a pleasant car-like motoring experience, but the hard suspension remains pure bucky, while the styling won't please everyone.